So the first thing you want to know about Design Magic is that it works with modifiers. Almost every single insert that is used to create objects will work with modifiers. And so before we get started of these inserts, and you can see here's a bunch of inserts. These are the solids inserts. These are the cutter inserts, which would be the Boolean difference inserts. And these are the union inserts. So these are your three main inserts. Then we have arrays. So if you want to add Boolean union or cutter arrays, you will use this K-Pack. This is your cable collection. This is a widget collection. And you have decals that you can actually uh, place on objects. And all of these will be growing, as I've mentioned before. We will I'll be adding to these as we move forward with the product. There are a lot of different objects, and these are all controlled with modifiers. First off, this is just a regular cube, and I want to explain a few of the modifiers. So if I just add a bevel modifier to this cube, you'll notice that the amount is going to add how much of a bevel I add to that cube. The segments are going to add, say, how many different segments I'm going to add. Let's, let's set the smoothing to flat. You can see, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I always recommend that either you do one or a minimum of eight. Uh, if you get smaller than eight, if you get like three or so, you may end up with artifacts when you start bullying things together. So use either eight or one in this segments. Tab into this cube and notice that when you edit it, it's still the cube. So this modifier does not affect the actual vertice count in the edit mode. So I'm gonna go in and you can see all these vertices. I'm gonna hit the two button. I'm gonna select two of these and I'm gonna give them a bevel weight because they're edge data. I'm gonna give them a bevel weight of say one and then I'm gonna tab back out. And you'll see it doesn't change anything. But if I go over here to limit method and I change it to weight, you'll see that it changed just those two and it applied this bevel setting, segments and everything and the size to just those two. And if I go even very, very large, you'll see that it actually turns this into a complete half of a cylinder here, right? Uh, the only problem is that if I if I were to actually apply this, I'm going to apply this modifier, just go in here and apply it, and then tab into it, you'll see that the modifier has now been applied. But if I look at here and select this, you'll see that I have two vertices at this one spot, not one. So I'm going to I'm going to undo that apply and then I'm going to add another modifier which is called a weld. And by adding that weld and then applying all of them using this apply all, by the way, that particular control doesn't come with bl Blender native. You're going to need to add that in your preferences and that will be under type in modifiers and just add that as interface modifier tools. That comes with every Blender, just turn it on. And when you do that, you're going to get that list, that box list up here that says viewport viz which basically turns everything on and off and the apply all and then delete all and the, and the toggle stack is simply just the ability to expand and collapse the stack so as we were talking as you can see we were talking about applying all of these and when i apply all of these and i tab back into it and now i select just this you'll see that it is only one so that's what the weld modifier is going to help us do now if i go in and undo all this. I'm going to tab into this and I'm going to select these two back here and I'm going to set the mean, be uh, the mean bevel weight for the edges data also to one and I tab out it. Now I have a cylinder and that cylinder also has a weld set up and this gives me an ability to create a cylinder that has fewer or less segments that I want. And when you go into kit ops, see we have that cylinder is right here. And by adding actually one more bevel modifier, you can see that we could actually add another bevel on top of that after the weld, and we can adjust the distance and the fillet. The solidify modifier. So I'm going to take this, and I want to add a modifier, and I'll call it solidify. And I'm going to go into wireframe. And we solidify off, you see that we have a complete manifold surface, I meaning it's a watertight solid surface. And when I turn it on and I adjust it, you can now see we have a wall thickness. In this view, you'll see that I can't really tell anything. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to add a subtraction and I'm gonna take just a basic cube and I'm gonna turn on the snap mode to face and uh, auto scale is always gonna be off. And I'll hit the add insert and I'll drag it right here and now I use the mouse button to scroll up and down. And then I've got that, and now I can just drag it down. And now you can start to see what I'm talking about as far as the solidify. Now I have this red region being shown, 
and that's because in here I have face orientation turned on. So let's turn that off. This allows us very quickly and easily to cut through something. And now you understand what the solidify does. And if I want to make that solidify a little bit smaller, I will change the solidify to a smaller thickness. If I want to go the other direction, I'll change here. That moves it on the inside or the outside to solidify. If I set it to zero, it makes it the same on both sides. And then here's the difference cube modifier that we added. And now I'm going to mirror it about the Z direction. So if I go to, I can't do that in regular mode. I have to go into smart mode. I need to hit the Z button. But look, it mirrored it here. Now, why is that? Well, that's because the object center of this object is right down here on the XY plane. So I need to change that. So I'll go under object, set origin, I mean the origin to the geometry of the object. So I click on here. Now, just as a procedure, I'll always go in here and I'll say, instead of median center, I'll say bound center. Every now and then you'll see that, that this doesn't set correctly. And if you set it to bound center, it always will. So there you have it. So now we've basically used kit ops to create on the top and the bottom a cutter surface. And I can, of course, as I edit one, I'm gonna edit the other. So if I move one over, I'll edit there. Now watch this, watch what happens when I get too close to them. And when that happens, I get something that's really not all that valuable. The key point there is that sometimes booleans aren't going to work correctly. So let me show you another example of two booleans just not working that well. I'm going to select all, hit X, delete it. And I'm going to go in here to my solids and I'm going to take a regular cube and I'm going to say add insert. And now when I add another cube on top of it, I'll select it and add insert. Notice that nothing happened and actually something did happen. I added another cube and you can see it right here, right on top of the one before. It didn't allow me to snap it to it. And that's because this already has KitOps properties. So KitOps won't allow you to add an insert to another insert or basically one that has KitOps properties. And I'll explain that in a second. But what I want to do is I'm going to remove the KitOps props. I'm going to go back in and to my positive, and I'm gonna add a cube on top of this. So if I add a cube, you'll see that it snaps to the top. I'll move it off to the side just a little bit. The reason why KitOps doesn't allow you to add an insert to another insert is that many times you wanna add, I wanna add an insert to this object, but this one is selected. So I can just go in here, and let's take a, a widget insert for instance. I'm gonna go ahead and add a, uh, like a bolt. And I can add an insert even to this, this, but actually what I'm adding it to is not, not this object, but I'm adding it to this object. If we look at our modifier stack, we'll see that that's where the bolt got added was to this object. So KitOps is smart enough to understand that if you've selected an insert and you're trying to add an insert to it, it's going to add the insert to the target object of that insert. And we look at any object and we can see what is the target object? Oh, it's this cube 001, which is what this is right here. That's cube 001. With this selected, I'm going to add a minus cube, and I'll just add that like this. Notice what happened here. As I move this back and forth, I get something that's a little bit worrisome in that it doesn't really create a solid. I'm cutting out into the inside of it. And the issue with that is that if we look at our objects here, we see that our difference is set to fast. And that's because in preferences, under KitOps, if you look under general, it says Boolean solver is fast. And I like that because I like to work quickly because if you start using exact, it's going to end up slowing things down quite a bit. If we look at our base target object, we'll see it's set to fast. If we turn it to exact, and the reason why it doesn't work is because this is set to exact, but guess what? This one's not set to exact. And as soon as I select both to exact, you'll see it does work. So the exact Boolean is a much higher quality Boolean difference. And you say, well, why wouldn't you just use exact all the time? Well, the reason why is because you're going to end up running into situations where things slow down tremendously. If I set them all to fast, and let me show you a quick way to do that. Under the Design Magic Metashape add-on, which you have added under Preferences, we'll just go in here and type in Design Magic right here. You just turn it on. This add-on comes with Design Magic. You can just go in and turn it on. And when you turn it on, it puts this little DM tab. And what you can do is you can select your main object and you can set set them to fast or exact. With I'm going to go ahead and just show one other tool that you're going to want to have. And it comes with KitOps Pro and KitOps Free. And we'll go into Preferences and we'll just look at KitOps. And right under there is something called Toggle VP Display. So install that. 
And that really is simple because what it allows you to do, let's say we go into local mode here and I want to actually edit this, but I don't want to edit it in wireframe because when KitOps creates an object like a cutter, it's going to actually convert the rest of it to wireframe. So if I do Alt, Control, Shift, Z, I can toggle between. It goes from solid mode to wireframe mode to bounding box mode. So you can Control, Alt, Shift, Z toggles between all three of those. And you'll find that's quite ha handy. So now I'll go out of local mode and now you can see uh, that this is our cutter, but it's showing it in solid mode, which we don't want. Control shift C, now it's our cutter, but that might be a little too visually confusing if you have a bunch of these. So if you hit it one more, now you're in, in the original bounding box mode and that's really what you want. So hopefully that makes sense and that will help. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and just delete these. I can just X delete a modifier. And when you delete a modifier, in KitOps, a KitOps modifier, you're gonna delete it from the modifier stack as well, which is nice. So it automatically gets rid of it. Let's just say Shift A, I'm gonna make a cube and I'm gonna move it over here and I'm gonna say Command minus, and I'm using the Bull Tool add-on, which is another add-on that comes with Blender. You don't use that often at all uh, when you're using Design Manager, but I just wanna show you this, Command minus. Okay, and so that cuts into that. Now, uh, Bull Tool always adds an exact, here it is, it, it always adds an exact, so it can't add in fast. So you're always working exact now. And if I delete this, I go back into our stack, notice this little red icon. That means that it still thinks a modifier is there. So you have to come back here and delete this here too. Now, another thing that I will mention about KitOps is if I add an insert, I go over here and I hit the X button for that insert, it won't allow me to delete that. Notice this, I can't delete it from the modifier stack and that's because I'm in smart mode. But once I go into regular mode, bam, I can delete the insert. So that's another thing to understand. So let's talk about a few other modifiers uh, that you may be interested in learning about. I'm gonna go back into the negatives and I'm gonna grab this parting line right here and I'll get into face and I'll add the insert. Let's add it right here. I'll scroll the mouse button up and then hold the Alt key down and scroll it this way. So I have got this and then I'll just drag it down to something like this and we'll look at it from the bottom. And let's take a look at, at uh, let's toggle the stack. Let's take a look at the modifiers we have for this. First, we have a bevel modifier. So that's gonna create this bevel area. Tab into this, you'll see a, if you look, these are four vertices that create this whole cutter. So the bevel, and we've already gone over this, so you can adjust the size of the bevel and you can adjust the number of segments in the bevel modifier. And we've talked about that. You can also grab these two vertices and you can move them, you know, you can move them about as you like. Uh, another thing you can do is you can select two vertices and you can right click and say subdivide and it gives you another one, or you can even add more. You know, I can move this. So this allows you to create a lot of different party lines. Now, let's talk about how we get the, the depth. I can either tab out of this, and I can just drag the depth down like that. So that works. Another way I can do it is in the screw modifier, this dimension right here is gonna adjust the depth and it'll actually go the opposite direction, which sometimes you may want to do. And then if we look at the solidify modifier, that's going to adjust the thickness. And notice that sometimes as this angle gets too tight, it's going to quit becoming a Boolean for us. So we need to pay attention to that when you're, when you're adjusting these. So there you go, there's thickness. And then of course, we have a mirror modifier that's set up to mirror this, just this object. Okay, so one more thing about vertex weights and edge weights. Notice that in this bevel, this is set to vertices and it's set to weight. And as we zoom in, we can see that this is a vertex. And if we go into the weight value, it's 0.5. And if I adjust this to 0.1, it's going to get larger. So, uh, but this one, I may want to make it smaller so I can actually drag it down to 0.25. Now, if I want to make them both much larger, I'll just adjust this right here. Uh, and then I can later on go back in and adjust it. So now it's the same thing is true with both vertex and edge weights. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so now let's talk about the array modifier. If we add this insert, which is using a rotational array of six items to this object and scale it and move it down, it also has an array, but it's collapsed. If I change this array, seven, eight, 
it's not going to do anything for us because this is using an empty to drive the actual angle differences. So we don't want to mess with these types of array modifiers in terms of the count. We have the count set up for us in here. There's a lot of different ones with different numbers of counts that you can use. You can also, just so you know, you can pull these down and you can change them like this. And now you're getting an insert in the middle of an object. And if I tab into this insert and hit A, you know, I can basically expand it a little bit and you're seeing what's going on is that we're expanding the insert. And so I might want to just say, let's move them all out like that. So there, there we have the inserts. So that's just something that lets you know that you can use these inserts in lots of different ways. Let's look at the array modifier as it pertains to a linear insert. So if we go in here and we just basically say, let's just grab this linear array and I want to add the insert right here and scale it little bit and drop it down and you can see what it does. And then if I go over here to the modifier properties, you can see we have an array so I can do a fixed count and notice that it's expanding longitudinally in an even way. So even though I have four here, I'll have three on this side, three on this side, and one in the middle, and they all work exactly right. And that's because I have this mirror modifier right here that's already set up. If I want to change the dimensions again, I can just tab into the one and, you know, do something like this, shrink it. And I can also go over here to uh, the factor X and just shrink that as well. And then, of course, I can bump this up. And I have these both in negatives and positives. So that's how the array modifier is used. And that really covers it for the basic modifiers and how they work in Design Magic. Thanks for watching. See you online.